All right, now we're moving on to our next nucleophilic reagent with aldehydes. Um, it's another reducing agent, sodium borohydride, reduced aldehydes to keto aldehydes and ketones to their alcohols. Uh, lithium or aluminum hydride is going to do a very similar thing. Um, but before we get into it too much, uh, I want to remind you of the idea that a more polarized bond is a more reactive bond. Um, when we think of alkyl halides, we often use alkyl halides in SN2 reactions and they work well because the carbon halogen bond is very polarized. The electron density is on the halogen and the carbon's partially positively charged and that difference of charge makes it reactive. So we, we need to remember that more polarized bonds, more polarized bonds equal more reactive. So now let's think about, let's apply that to this new reagent. So we have lithium aluminum hydride. So it's going to look like a lot like sodium borohydride. Lithium is Li. It's in the same um, column as sodium. Aluminum is Al and then H4. And how is this going to compare to sodium borohydride? Well, we have again lithium plus. That's a that's a, anion, a cation. Um, and then what about uh, the rest of it? Well, again, we have Al with four H's around it. We had boron with four H's around it. A negative charge on Al. Um, but how are these aluminum hydride bonds going to potentially differ a little bit from the boron hydride bonds? Um, so which of them is going to be more polarized? Uh, we said that the boron hydride bonds are actually polarized toward the hydrogen, making the hydrogen have a partial negative. Well, where is aluminum and where is boron on the periodic table? Um, well, they're, they're far to the right. You could potentially pause the video and look up a periodic table right now to get a full view. But boron and aluminum are, on, on, are kind of toward the right of the table. Boron is on the higher side and aluminum is on the lower side, which means that aluminum is, uh, is, is less electronegative than boron. So it is going to have an even more polarized bond toward hydrogen. So um, essentially... This bond is more polarized. Um, that means that the H minus is more reactive than the sodium borohydride H minus because it's essentially the same reagent. It still acts as an H minus, and this is supposed to be a three. Got some weird lighting in my basement, uh, showing equal to. Um, but essentially, yeah, the H minus is, is more reactive than sodium borohydride's H minus. Um, and that changes something um, about uh, the conditions that we run this reaction in as well. And, and uh, hold on for one second. All right, so now we're going to fill in some of those blanks on the note packet. Um, so essentially, we said lithium aluminum hydride is a more reactive H minus. And really, lithium aluminum hydride, LAH, is super reactive, super reactive. Um, it will reduce, so we talked about polarized functional groups, all those carbonyl type compounds were polarized functional groups, they have a C double bond O that's polarized. It will reduce any polarized functional group. And, and when we think back for a second to sodium borohydride, sodium borohydride would only reduce aldehydes and ketones. So this is a pretty stark difference. This one can reduce all of them. Because lithium aluminum hydride is super reactive, because it's super reactive, it must be used with aprotic solvents. So aprotic solvents, what does that mean? Solvents that are lacking an acidic proton. Uh, methanol, ethanol, water, all of those things have a somewhat acidic proton. What do we have to use here? We have to use either some type of ether, so diethyl ether is one thing that's commonly used. Um, another thing that's commonly used is THF, which is a cyclic ether. It's called tetrahydrofuran. This is THF. This is diethyl ether. Um, 
So those solvents must be used with the lithium aluminum hydride. Yeah. What would happen if we used a protic solvent such as CH3OH methanol with lithium aluminum hydride? Essentially the H minus, the really reactive H minus as part of lithium aluminum hydride is reactive enough to act as a base and that base would pull off the proton of methanol and that would generate H2. So this is that H combining with one of the four H's of the lithium aluminum hydride. And then we would also have lithium plus um, OCH3 minus and we would have our Al H3. So essentially we, we, we have to use the solvents that lack those acidic protons um, or this other reaction is going to happen and it's going to happen a lot faster. Acid-base chemistry is always the fastest if it's, if it's a very downhill deprotonation. Um, so uh, we, we can only use lithium aluminum hydride if we're using aprotic solvents. Um, so how does lithium aluminum hydride work? So how does lithium aluminum hydride work? We asked the question a second ago. Um, well, if we want to reduce the ketone of the aldehyde to the alcohol, we'll use our lithium aluminum hydride, but we can't just have it by itself. We have to have some solvent that it's in. So we would write down one of those solvents. I'm just going to write THF for that cyclic ether that was previously up on the board. Um, How is this going to work? Again, even though um, it's a more reactive reagent, we kind of treat it the same way. It's H minus. It's going to add to that carbonyl and that is going to generate this alkoxide intermediate. And at this point, um, where's this proton going to come from? Do we have any protons around that, that it could deprotonate? Think about that for a second. Which proton will it be able to grab? Yeah, it actually can't grab any. There are no protons in solution that are acidic enough for this O minus to grab. If there were, lithium aluminum hydride would have reacted with them already. So this has to be kind of a two-step reaction. We have a one by that, then secondly, we're going to add a source of a proton to protonate that molecule. So um, again, we'll, we'll say H3O plus slash H2O, um, and essentially uh, that's just going to result in that proton transfer. We see right here just an acid base reaction um, to generate our final product. So, um, lithium aluminum hydride, another way to reduce ketones and aldehydes to alcohols. And we'll see later that lithium aluminum hydride also reduces many of those other functional groups.